One of the hardest things about covering the news is the fact that nine times out of 10, the news absolutely sucks. It's full of politicians doing dumb things and legacy media activists in disguise saying dumb things. I'd say that nine and a half times out of 10, it's also downright depressing. So when a patron sent me this story, I figured that at the very least, it would be the perfect opportunity to laugh at the stupidity of the world around us. You talk to any gun owner and a popular theme will often be that if you don't know anything about a subject, you probably shouldn't be attempting to legislate it. But I, I read the, I read the legislation, I'm sorry, I read the legislation and it said that it would regulate barrel shrouds. What's a barrel shroud and why should we regulate that? I'm not saying it was the best bill, but that okay. was the best do, bill do they could get out at that particular is? time. Do you know what a barrel shroud is? I actually don't know what a barrel oh, shroud okay, is. I think it's, in it's your a shoulder thing that goes up. Today's story is proof of that. As a quick aside, today's video is also brought to you with the help of mom and pop pro-liberty coffee company, Blackout Coffee, which features special Second Amendment and 1776 brews on top of some really great medium roast flavors. You can find them linked down in the description. Over the weekend, California Assemblyman David Chu was out for a walk and found a no good, very bad, disturbing thing on the sidewalk. He was so disturbed by his find, in fact, that he took a picture and posted it to Twitter in this now deleted tweet. Finding the discarded packaging of a semi-automatic on a leisurely weekend walk was disturbing, particularly during this month's surge of gun violence in San Francisco. Except David proved that not only does he know nothing about guns and the Second Amendment, he also apparently can't read. Because right under the word Glock, the packaging clearly reads that it's for a CO2-powered BB gun. What a f idiot. Even though the original tweet has been deleted, the thread is still up with some pretty genius replies. One person schooled Mr. Chu on what Glock packaging really looks like and suggested Googling before tweeting in the future. Another claimed to have found orange bullets on his own walk in the morning, referencing the time Huffington Post reporter Ryan J. Riley tweeted a photo of some earplugs and claimed that they were rubber bullets while reporting on Ferguson in 2014. That tweet has, of course, also been deleted, but the internet is forever. After being both corrected and mocked, Chu removed the tweet and posted, I deleted an earlier tweet that misidentified a Glock 19 air pistol. While not a semi-automatic, it's still disturbing to see remnants of a weapon that can cause injury, especially in an area where young kids play and while we are dealing with a surge of gun violence in San Francisco. While a BB or airsoft gun can certainly cause injury if you point it at the wrong target, you'll shoot your eye up. You'll shoot your eye up. I would hardly call it a weapon. For decades, the same item would have been called a toy. Federal law doesn't even consider them to be firearms. For a reason. This tweet might as well say, I'm dumb and got caught being dumb, so I'm doubling down on my stupid stance and pretending it's actually a correction. Because that's basically what it is. David Chu represents California's 17th district, which includes half of San Francisco, a city plagued by homelessness and literal feces on the streets. Yet it's litter for a fake gun that disturbs him, or at least was something he thought he could use for political brownie points. That man is a brownie hound. Chu's biggest claim to fame during his political tenure was Assembly Bill 2847, a bill requiring ammo to be micro-stamped. Despite being signed into law in 2020 by the equally clueless Gavin Newsom, the bill hasn't actually gone into effect because it's currently not technologically possible. 
which is even more proof that Chu has been wasting taxpayer dollars creating bills for things he doesn't understand. On that, too, Chu doubled down like any good little politician would, writing a piece for his campaign website claiming that when gun makers said it would be impossible to craft barrels that would leave microscopic serial numbers on spent ammo, he claimed that they were lying and triumphantly told his supporters he'd called the gun industry's bluff. California is the only state with a micro-stamping law, and in one way, the law has been successful. With the passage of the first micro-stamping bill in 2007, gun manufacturers simply stopped introducing new handguns in California because it was literally impossible to implement the bill's requirements. While that obviously did nothing to stop gun violence, it certainly put limits on lawful gun ownership, which we all know is the ultimate goal. Chu's bill sought to scale back some of the 2007 requirements, again claiming that the technology exists, is foolproof, and would put an end to crime. Even if micro-stamping was feasible, all a criminal would have to do is pick up their shell casings or, even better, use a revolver. But again, that logic would require at least a rudimentary understanding of how firearms work. Short, but honestly, kind of sweet. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe if you're new here. Also, please consider supporting the channel with any of the partner links down in the description, as well as various support options, including PayPal, Patreon, and Subscribestar. Until next time, and as always, thanks for watching, stay safe, and happy shooting.